Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be talking about the drug atenolol, also known as tenormin. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Atenolol belongs to the beta blocker drug classification, and is used as an antihypertensive and antianginal medication. The way that atenolol works is by inhibiting or blocking a certain part of the nervous system. The part of the nervous system that is affected is called the sympathetic nervous system which is also known as the fight-or-flight nervous system. Normally, the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure by causing the blood vessels to constrict, causing bronchodilation or opening the airway, and more. All of these effects are very beneficial in a fight-or-flight state because they all result in more oxygen and more blood flow throughout the body. However, over time, elevated blood pressure can lead to damage of the arteries increasing the risk for angina, heart attacks, strokes, and more. Atenolol blocks or inhibits the beta-1 adrenergic receptors in the sympathetic nervous system. For a quick review of beta adrenergic receptors, beta-1 is mainly responsible for increasing heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output, while beta-2 is mainly responsible for bronchodilation. Atenolol is a selective beta-1 blocker also known as a cardioselective beta blocker. This means that atenolol only blocks the beta-1 receptors, causing the opposite of beta-1's normal effects. So atenolol decreases heart rate, decreases blood pressure by vasodilating, and decreases cardiac output. It is possible, but rare, to see any inhibitory effects on beta-2 receptors with normal doses of atenolol. In higher doses, however, beta-2 receptors may be inhibited, causing bronchoconstriction. So again, to sum up, atenolol inhibits beta-1 receptors of the adrenergic or fight-or-flight nervous system, primarily resulting in decreased heart rate and decreased blood pressure. So like we said, atenolol is used as an antihypertensive for the management of high blood pressure by causing vasodilation. The more dilated the blood vessels are, the lower the blood pressure, and the easier it is for the heart to pump blood into circulation. And because the heart has an easier time pumping when we administer atenolol, we can also use it in the treatment of angina. So again, atenolol lowers blood pressure to treat hypertension, but it also decreases the workload of the heart, or it decreases the amount of energy and oxygen that the heart requires, which is very useful in the treatment of angina. Atenolol can also be used in the prevention of myocardial infarctions or heart attacks for the same reasons. Some of the off-labeled uses of atenolol include ventricular arrhythmias by affecting heart rate and contractility of the heart, migraines, thyrotoxicosis, and more. A lot of the side effects of atenolol are related to how the drug works. Atenolol may cause bradycardia, which is low heart rate, and hypotension, which is low blood pressure. Hypotension may manifest as dizziness, fatigue, weakness, and more. Less common side effects of atenolol include weight gain or edema, pulmonary edema and bronchospasms, which may present as wheezing, coughing, and chest pain, decreased libido and erectile dysfunction, and more. And due to the side effects, atenolol should not be used in clients with pulmonary edema, bradycardia, hypotension, or cardiogenic shock. Atenolol should be used with caution in clients with COPD or asthma due to the risk of inhibiting the beta-2 receptors in the sympathetic nervous system. As with many drugs, use cautiously in clients with hepatic or renal impairment and elderly clients due to decreased drug elimination. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of atenolol. Monitor heart rate and blood pressure before administration. Typically, if heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute or systolic blood pressure is less than 90, hold the medication and notify the provider. Especially for elderly clients, instruct clients to avoid rapid changes in position, such as changing from sitting to standing, to reduce the risk of orthostatic hypotension and falls. Ensure that diabetic clients are aware that atenolol may mask symptoms of hypoglycemia. Lastly, as with most all antihypertensive medications, it is important not to discontinue atenolol abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of hypertensive crisis. And that's about it for the basics of atenolol. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.